As part of her research, Belcher enlists the help of a very simple organism, a bacteriophage. This hardy, benign virus has single-stranded DNA containing just a few genes that code for specific proteins. With some genetic engineering, you can add DNA sequences to those genes that'll add a little protein sequence on the virus, said Belcher. Uh, yeah, as part of good um, protocol, I'm wearing gloves and uh, I should be wearing uh, my goggles uh, today. Um, not as much to um, uh, protect me from the organisms you work on, but uh, to protect them from me. Basically, I'm walking around with all kinds of, uh, of bacteria that are associated with me just being, uh, just being human. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, clone and make populations of very, very pure bacteria, very, very pure yeast um, that only have the specific job that I want them to have, build an electrode for a battery, build a material for a solar cell. So I'm trying not to contaminate them, not them contaminating me. Anyway, so they, um, they grow in these shakers here. We have a, we'll have a flask that is just very rich in the nutrients that, that we need to grow our bacteria of interest. We'll put them in here and they'll just grow um, uh, normally. They grow uh, at, about, um, uh, at about body temperature. Um, and what we're going to actually do is we're going to take a collection of about a billion organisms and say, of those billion organisms, let's find the one, let's find the one that can do the function that I want it to do. And so we'll walk over it and, and take a look at that. This is um, the, my group where most all of the work happens in terms of engineering uh, biology to grow materials for energy. And um, it's, uh, it's an incredibly multidisciplinary group in the fact that we have engineers and, and scientists that are all working together with the common goal of can you convince an organism to start making in a biologically friendly and environmentally way materials that are actually useful that eventually be able to hold in your hand or use in a device um, for ener either energy production or energy storage. Belcher's team has now trained viruses to grow more than 40 semiconductor and electronic materials. They add precursor chemicals to a solution of selected viruses, and each virus grows a solid coating of the target material. Further tweaking has taught the coated viruses to align themselves in neat rows on a solid surface. And inserting several genes into a single virus causes it to grow multiple materials sewn together without defects. To create the first virus-based rechargeable battery, viruses are used to grow cobalt oxide on a copper surface, and then lithium is added on the other side. The battery produced looks just like saran wrap. It's lightweight and flexible, its energy density is high due to its nanoscale structure, and it can be integrated into the device being powered, for example, as a coating on night vision goggles or sewn into fabrics. Here's more of um, the end products of, of two different processes that we've been able to train these microorganisms to do. One is uh, we've been able to get them to build this powder here, this dark powder, which is actually um, very, very fine um, material that is used for a battery electrode. We've actually used um, this, this material for battery electrodes and other materials to build uh, fully functional batteries. Some of the things that's very interesting about this is that um, um, these um, batteries have very interesting properties. Um, the properties um, are that they actually have um, um, a high energy density, which means that they can uh, store a lot of, uh, of energy in a small space in a safe way, which is what we'd like to be able to be able to do. Now, these are all made using completely non-toxic precursors, and um, these materials are actually uh, not toxic at all. So that's one particular kind of application. Some of the things that are that are in addition that are really neat about biological inspired and biologically assembled batteries is that they can be very, very thin. They can be transparent, they can be flexible, and they can be very transparent as well. Actually, I've dropped them before uh, and not been able to find them uh, because they're actually so transparent. They look a lot like saran wrap. In this um, image right here, you can see um, a, a, a photograph of what one of these biological base batteries looks like. Uh, a second uh, um, kind of product or, or technology that we're using with this biological processing is this purple material here. These are actually very, very small wires that are much, much thinner than, than, a, than a human hair. They're actually not much thicker than, uh, than a strand of DNA. You can't see them here. Um, you, can, you can see uh, images um, 
right here of what these would look like at uh, a million times uh, magnified. But um, these are materials we're developing for fuel cell technology, for hydrogen fuel cell. Um, and I can show you over here the kinds of setup that we do to make measurements. So we're, we're really a materials lab. Our, our job and our main goal is how do you develop new processes, new methods of making improved materials, in this case where the materials would be useful for, um, for energy applications. Uh, but we have to make measurements on these because you, if you make great materials, they have to have great properties. And this is a setup that we use here. You have a light source coming in here uh, to measure the, um, uh, how good our materials are. In this case, this particular setup is a setup to, um, to be able to measure um, this, the, um, the properties of our solar cells. And so these are biologically assembled uh, materials for solar. And so we have a light source, and so we're measuring the ability to convert the, the um, the, the light to, um, to, um, to, as a source for uh, electrical uh, energy. Belcher's group is already working on other energy-related technologies. They built components for solar collectors, a challenge because of their large scale. And they're beginning to think about how to make fuel cells. In Belcher's view, anything is possible. I think we can apply our technologies to many other kinds of problems, she said. Ideas include making organisms that would break down polymers to make fuels, or that would incorporate carbon dioxide into their building material, a form of carbon sequestration.